Commercial shrimp trawling in the Gulf of Mexico and South Atlantic provides a living for thousands of fishermen. Fishermen have learned that making their fishing gear as efficient as possible is critical to their bottom line. Fishermen have learned how to tune their fishing gear, such as door settings and amount and placement of chain, to increase their shrimp catch. They have also determined the most efficient type and size of shrimp trawl to use. In recent years, fishermen and gear researchers have been challenged to make shrimp trawls that are more efficient at excluding unwanted catch. This unwanted catch includes protected species such as sea turtles and fish species which are valuable to commercial and recreational fishermen. After many years of research and sea trials, fishing gear such as the turtle excluder device and bycatch reduction device have been developed. Both of these devices have been modified and improved over the years to become more efficient at excluding unwanted catch while not affecting the shrimp catch. Some of the modifications to these devices include funnels and exit hole flaps. The materials and methods of making these modifications are critical to their degree of efficiency. Gear researchers and commercial fishermen have spent countless hours trying to determine what component characteristics are critical for good TED and BRD performance. Often two TEDs or BRDs that seem identical will perform differently. This has been a mystery for researchers for many years. Many fishermen know that identical trawls pulled together may have differing catch rates. This phenomenon is called net bias. Because net bias exists during any comparative towing test, TED and BRD positions are alternated to reduce this bias from affecting the results of the test. Finally, an answer came to explain why this phenomenon may be occurring. Gear researchers at the National Marine Fisheries Service, Pascagoula, Mississippi Laboratories, were corresponding with fishing gear researchers in Australia. They found out that the Australians had also been perplexed by this question. In 1986, researchers at the Australian Maritime College were conducting flume tank experiments with model shrimp trawls and discovered that two identical model trawls had differing fishing configurations and geometry. After some thought about the matter, one of the students at the college thought that the orientation of the knots to the water flow might make a difference in the way the trawls performed. A test was conducted the following day by turning one of the nets inside out. When this test was conducted, the trawls performed identically. After this discovery, a number of tests were performed, changing the knot direction of the webbing. From these tests, it was determined that knot orientation definitely has an effect on trawl performance. This diagram shows what we mean by knot orientation. Here we are using large mesh webbing for demonstrational purposes, but the principle will remain the same for smaller meshes. Imagine that the webbing is being pulled through the water from right to left. As we get a closer look, Note the angle of this knot with respect to the water flow. The water flowing over the surface of this knot will force this knot to move in a downward direction. We consider this knot to have a negative knot orientation.
Now we are looking at the same webbing turned upside down. This will cause the knot orientation to be reversed from its previous position. Now the knot has a positive knot orientation. The angle of this knot has now been reversed. This orientation will force the knot to move upward. Again, assuming the water flow is from right to left. This concept may take a little time to grasp, but it may be helpful if you get a piece of webbing for yourself and take a closer look. The harvesting systems and engineering branch subsequently did some in-water investigations of their own. They had noticed that seemingly identical TEDs and BRDs had differing performances. During our gear testing project in Panama City, Florida, the National Marine Fisheries Service divers looked at TEDs, BRDs, and other trawl components with differing knot orientations. The results of these observations were dramatic. Our first test was using a small TED with a large flap. Here we see an inshore bent bar TED with a leatherback sea turtle modification on the flap. The flap is made of one and a half inch mesh and will make a 72 inch opening when stretched. The knots are negatively oriented to the water flow. This will cause the meshes to be pushed down. As you can see, there's a large gap between the flap and the grid. The same flap was then turned over so that the knot orientation was such that the webbing was being pushed upward by the water flow. As you can see, this makes a big difference in the size of the gap between the flap and the TED frame. In this case, with a small TED and large flap, there is a folding of the flap due to so much excess webbing. We performed additional testing of knot orientation on the research vessel Nino. During these tests, we used a bottom opening, mid-size bent bar TED. The tow speed was two and a half knots. During the first test, we oriented the flap to have a negative knot orientation, causing the flap to go down in the water column, leaving a gap between the flap and the TED frame. This grid is 41 inches by 33 inches. The flap has a 35 inch by 18 inch opening. During the second test, we turn the flap upside down from its previous position. This closed the gap between the flap and the grid considerably. These knots have a positive knot orientation. The last test we ran was with a mid-size bent bar TED with a leatherback sea turtle modified flap. This flap would stretch to 72 inches. Initially it was tested with a negative knot orientation.
Next, we tested the same flap turned over with the knots having a positive orientation, again using the mid-size bent bar TED. As before, the flap made close contact with the grid. Additional testing will be conducted on the effects of knot orientation, but the preliminary results show that knot orientation can be very important in the way that the trawls and trawl components work. As a fisherman, it would be prudent to always check to make sure that the knot orientation is correct in your trawl and trawl components. For additional information and literature, please call or write us at the following address. The National Marine Fisheries Service, 3209 Frederick Street, Pascagoula, Mississippi.